Okay, great. Okay. So, hi everyone. So, my name is um, Quentin Le Seller. I'm a software developer at BlockCypher and um, a green developer too. And I'm really happy to be here today to talk about uh, green. So, specifically about uh, building member member green uh, and implementation for privacy and scalability. So, green is the result of the work from many, many people. So you see some names here, but like there is a huge list of people on, on GitHub too. Um, <clears throat> so let's get started. So when you think about like a new cryptocurrency launch, you you have like you can have this like this nice timeline where you have like the ID of Mimber Wimber in 2016, the like the creation of Green a few months later, and like you have some development phase and you have the launch. But in fact, it's more, much more like this. You have the ID, the creation of the coin, and like at first you have back and forth, you have this design decision to make, and it's kind of, you, you do stuff, you reverse stuff too, so, and you launch. So today's talk is really about like all the building blocks that are in green, and, but before talking about green specifically, I need to talk about something, which is Mimble Wimble. So Mimble Wimble, what is it? So it's a new blockchain design that was proposed by someone called Tom L. Oliver, and it was uh, proposed anonymously on an IFC channel. And it's a new blockchain design that offers several benefits. First one is privacy by default. Second one is it's massively printable. And third one is really on the same proven um, elliptic curve cryptography. And just like Bitcoin is output based, and when you want to understand the magic of Mimble Wimble, you have to look at the transaction level. When you look at the transaction in Mimble Wimble, there is three parts. There is inputs, which reference to all outputs. There is outputs, which are confidential transaction plus range proof. And there is kernel, which are output minus input minus C, and a signature. So when you want to verify a Mimble Wimble transaction, you basically do, uh, you verify the signatures and you also verify that output minus inputs equal kernel. And this gives us like some really nice property because inputs, outputs, and kernels are just random number here. So what you can do is that you can have two transactions, for example here, and for example transaction one has two inputs and two outputs and a kernel. Transaction two has two inputs and one output. And you can see that transaction two actually spent um, and an, an, an output from transaction one. And when you do like the, uh, the math, like output minus input equal kernel, what you can do is you, you can just sum those two transactions and it's still the same equation. And like what you can also do is you can also remove the spent output from the blockchain and the equation output minus input is still valid, equal kernel. And so we have the same idea for the blockchain, uh, for the member member blockchain. It's like every block in the member member blockchain is basically a huge transaction because miners will take all the, transac all the transaction, group them, do th what we call the cut through, which is removing the spent, uh, spent outputs, and publish this big transaction. And what is really cool with member member is when you want to sync the blockchain, you don't have to, uh, to download every block. You can download just the state of the blockchain, which is basically uh, all the blocks added together where, and where you remove the spent outputs. So you give you like a really, really light state of the blockchain. Still, you, you will need to download the block headers, um, the unspent transaction output set, and finally, the kernel set. So this is like really like a crash course into uh, Mimble Mimble, and now I want to talk about green. So building green. So just to take a step back, uh, green was created by, uh, in October 20, 2016, by someone called Ignotus Favreau. And it's actually the first implementation of Mimble Rainbow. So when Ignotus started to uh, start a green, the idea was to create uh, a simple blockchain. Because Mimble Rainbow, in a way, is simple. So he had like these guiding principles which were, which, which were like simplicity, privacy, and scalability. And so like these guiding principles will influence the development of green during like these two years, from 2016 to now. 
And as I was saying, green, uh, Mimble Mimble is just one of the building blocks of green. So you have many, many more parts that you need to add to have a complete cryptocurrency. And sometimes this part, you, you can make good or bad decision, it depends. And some, so today, I want to talk about four of them, four building blocks in green that I think are interesting in a way because it shows you the iterative process of building a cryptocurrency, and it shows you also the, the cool technology that there is in green. So the first building block I want to talk about is uh, Mac and Mountain Range. So Mac and Mountain Range are really important for green, and actually they were created by Peter Todd, and what is it exactly? It's a, it's a Merkle tree that can grow and be effici efficiently stored on disk. So it's a really fast data structure to store information. And anytime you can have a um, logarithmic size proof that an element belongs to the tree. So it's really, really useful for a blockchain like Mimble Mimble, like in green. So in green, this building block is used to several things. To store the kernels, the outputs, and the range proof. And this enables fast sync. So fast sync is when you download the, the state of the blockchain reduce. And I was saying it provides a unique, provide a unique representation of the unspent transaction output set, and you can prove the existence of, uh, of, uh, of the unspentness of any output. It's like the, the most straightforward building block of green, one of the most important two. Uh, second building block I want to talk about is the proof of work of the consensus algorithms. So every cryptocurrency needs that. So to understand why, uh, why Green used this specific proof of work, we need to go back to 2016. So back in 2016, there was no uh, real alternative to proof of work, and proof of stake was really experimental at that time. So since the beginning of Green, uh, John Trump Cuckoo Cycle was chosen to be the, the green proof of work. And like, at the time, there were like three reasons why it was selected. Because it's a simple design, which is like only 42 line, uh, line specification. It's memory bound, and it was initially thought to be ethics resistant. So it was back in 2016. Because you will need a certain amount of memory to, uh, to compute the result, and memory is really expensive for ASICs. But the thing is, like, a year and a half later, we figured that um, in August 2018, secret ASIC mining was a thing. So there was the uh, Zcash ASIC, the Monero ASIC, and we figured out that the possibility that someone could um, mine from, on day one with a secret ASIC on Cuckoo Cycle was really, really high. And we don't want that, because we don't want to compromise the fair distribution of the coin and even more at the beginning of a new, of a new cryptocurrency. We don't, want, we don't want to damage the security of green because of the uh, mining sortization. And so the first idea was to switch to a dual proof of work system. Uh, so two proof of work, one for ASICs and one for GPU, which we call the primary proof of work for ASICs and secondary proof of work for GPU. The primary proof of work was Cuckoo Cycle which was supposed to be ASIC friendly. And the second type of fork was uh, EquiHash, or EquiGreen, because it's EquiHash with uh, different parameters than Zcash. And like, this second type of fork will be tweaked every six months to discourage any ASIC manufacturer to build ASIC for that. But um, a, few a few months later, like we, like John Trump managed to uh, to, to adapt the cuckoo cycle to, uh, to the, both the primary and secondary. So by the primary, I mean like Kuka 2 31 was, was uh, created. It's just a variant of cuckoo cycle, which uh, simplifies ASIC designs. And basically, we want to, uh, to encourage uh, ASICs in the long term. So what we've, what we've done is like at the beginning of green, 10% of, of the reward will be for ASICs, and in two years, uh, 100%. And for GPU, it's just a variant of Cuckoo Cycle, which enforced the use of memory, of, uh, of uh, several gigabytes of memory. And it, it was initially thought to be uh, 
seven gigabytes minimum of memory, but actually it was more like 5.5. And I was saying, like this secondary proof of work will be tweaked every six months to, to discourage any ASIC manufacturer to build on it. So it's like, really, really I show you like the, uh, from 2015 where we had like a pure implementation of uh, Cuckoo Cycle in green, and to today where we have a dual proof of work system with like a linear increasing primary proof of work and decreasing secondary. So we like show you the iterative process of, uh, of the development of a green cryptocurrency. And third building block I want to talk about is switch commitments. So this one is really interesting because there's a lot of back and forth. So first, what are switch commitments? So it was uh, pre introduced by Ruffing and Malavolta in 2017, and it's basically the thing that in green we use confidential transaction, and these confidential transactions are not quantum safe. So these switch commitments introduce a safety switch in confidential, confidential transaction, and later if we have any doubt that there is like a quantum computer, uh, that there is a quantum computer, we can require the user to reveal the switch, which will be an analgamic commitment, to spend the outputs. And in green, it was first proposed like this. So we had like the uh, Pedersen commitment, and we had the switch commitment, and it was implemented in October 2017. But the thing is like this uh, scheme was not, uh, was not good for, for green, because this implementation does not guarantee privacy for spent outputs. You cannot lock can based outputs, and we had like a several issues during the wallet restore because we had to switch to save this, this tiny bit of data along the Peterson commitment. So Team Riffing went back to the mailing list and proposed a new scheme, which was later implemented in green. But a few months later, it was removed again. It was removed. And because switch commitments were found to, uh, to add a lot of complexity and assertion to green, they would take additional space for little benefit right now, and also allow people to put any arbitrary data in the blockchain. Because you had to store this tiny amount of data for each transaction. And finally, switch commitments were back uh, a few months ago, actually. And Actually, Tim Ruffing went, went back on the mailing saying switch commitment again and with a new scheme where well, you just have to, you just tweak the, um, the person commitment, you have just like have a new value. And this new method, which was uh, presented by Peter Woody, does not need additional data, does not need additional random value, and you cannot uh, put any arbitrary data in it. And this was implemented just a few weeks ago just before green launch. And finally, this, the last building block I want to talk about is the community. So I believe, I believe it's one of the most important building blocks in green. Um, since 2016, there was like some kind of organic growth of the community. And I think they were attracted by the, uh, the fairness of this new coin, by meaning that there is no ICO, no founder reward. It's like, like this non-profit nature in green. And also like the, the ugly experimental side that people were attracted to, because we are, we are using like the cutting edge of cryptography, and finally the openness of the community. So like this community gave us uh, several projects at, at launch, such as community mining pools, um, alternative implementation, open source mining software, mining software with fair mining license. So fair mining license is a way for uh, many developers to give back to the Green Development Fund with a fee. Open Source Block Explorer, Mobile and Desktop Wallet, and uh, Green Conference 2, GreenCon and GreenCon US. And so, finally, on January 15, Green was launched. So, what we have right now is we have a, when you download Green, you have a full Green node with uh, all the previous features that, that I talked about, all the building blocks. And you have also a, really like a command line wallet. It's really, a, there, is no, there is no GUI right now. And you have an integrated Saturn server. Uh, so now I want to talk about the, 
the future work on green. So I think we can, we can I'm going to talk about like only the technical future work. Uh, so there are like two parts, yeah. What we, we can call the, the near future things that we can, we can already implement right now, and the more like the research uh, that we want to have in green and maybe implement if it's good or not. So the first one will be, uh, so in the near future, we, we can implement atomic swaps, relative logs, fly client, and Dandelion++. And the research uh, will be like Vault, uh, RSA accumulators, scriptless script, and uh, BLS signatures. So I'm going to go through three of them. First one will be is Fly Client. So what is Fly Client? So it was created by Loliu, Benedict Gibbons, and Madi Zamani, and presented at Scaling Beacon 2017. So basically, it's a way to, basically what you do is you store the Merkel Mountain Range route in the block header to quickly, change the block, to quickly check the blockchain validity. And there is two use cases for green. First one is like clients. So you, you, can, you can switch, you can sync the blockchain really, really quickly. And you can quickly identify the longest chain for full nodes with near certainty. And you can download the block headers in the background like so. So one of the cool features that we we'll already have in green because we already store the Mac and Mountain Range route. We just need to use it. And then in the research part, we have two things. Like I'm going to talk about two things. First one is RSA accumulators. So, so I talked about the, so, yeah, so, like in 2018, there was this paper called Batching Technique for Accumulators with Application to IOP and Stateless Blockchain, which like present techniques to, uh, to do batching on accumulators. And right now in green, we use uh, an accumulator which is uh, the Merkel Mountain Range. So it's just a data structure, you, you put data in it, you can check if it's present in it. And what we could do with this RSA accumulator, we could replace this big Merkel Mountain Range with just a fixed size uh, RSA accumulator. But like, there is pros and cons for this. So we could, like the pros is that we remove the Merkel Mountain Range. So we, we have like a, uh, you have like a smaller size uh, proof, and it's a fixed size, uh, fixed size accumulator compared to Merkel Mountain Range. But the con is like this a completely dif different security assumption, and you need the two-step setup with, uh, with this RSA accumulator, and it's not quantum safe compared to Merkel Mountain Range, which are uh, Merkel Mountain Range, which are quantum safe. And finally, the BLS signatures. So this kind of signatures, uh, so presented in, in, uh, by Dan Bonnet, Berlin, and Shaman in uh, 2001, it's, uh, can be really useful for green. Why? Because as of now, you cannot, you, you have seen like you have all the kernels in the blockchain, and you cannot put them together. But, like with this BLS signature, we could do that. We could do like some non-interactive kernel aggregation and potentially simpler uh, multi-signature schemes compared to Schnorr signatures that we have right now. And also, like, there is pros and cons. Also here, it's like, it might be slower to validate than Schnorr signatures, and it's a completely different uh, security assumption for this kind of signature. Okay, so... So, sure, okay. So if you want to, to learn more about Green, if you want to contribute, if you want to, uh, to discuss with the developers, you can go to greentech.org and you can, if you want, open um, a pull request on GitHub member member. Okay, thank you. Pretty, pretty cool. I mean, so, yeah. that, so, that, so that's deployed. That's actually yeah. in the project. Yeah, that's done by uh, this guy. <laughs> what, 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 what's the plan for uh, like uh, so if a disaster happens and a quantum computer is built, there's like a switch you can pull, and then everybody has to use the switch commitments. Yeah. So how, if, how does that work? So basically, like you have like the, you have your outputs, and you you know like the, you know the commitments. 
because, because the, the thing like you, you can choose to reveal, we, we can say, okay, like if there is a quantum computer, we, we can, we have to reveal these values, which are in here, and only you can know them. So like, yeah. So, so normally you would just reveal B, and in uh, case of a quantum attack, you'd have to reveal B prime? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. So who, who decides, so I'm just curious, how, how is this gonna work? Who decides that it's time to do the switch? Uh, so like there is no like there is no world map. So what happened is like when you ah we decide like I, I mean in, in the um, that's a good question. Yeah, okay. So actually like it would be like a like a, a community decision to say okay we have to enforce the, this new scheme right now because we believe that as you were saying uh, in 30 years maybe there will be like quantum computers. So if like may, maybe it will be too late or maybe like too early we don't know. Well it's just a community decision. Very nice.